My name is Doc Nocturno. Can I call you Doc Knock? No. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, let's take a look at the Mezco 112 Collective Rumble Society Doc Nocturnal. Many thanks to Mezco who reached out and asked me if I wanted to take an early look at this, and I thought, and I definitely said, uh, yeah. Even cooler than that, I have no clue what's in here. I mean, I've seen the teases, I know the skull, the cloak, but otherwise, I don't know all the details, all the accessories. They did send a couple of pages of the comic that comes with this figure. It's very pulpy, and even though there's no text, no talking, you still get a good idea of what this character is about. Looking at the package, it's what we got with Baron Benz. You have the skull in the glossy black on the matte black, looking very, very fancy. The gold with that same skull in it, the Rumble Society. My camera keeps wanting to focus past that into the reflection of, huh, hello, me. On the side, Rumble Society in that glossy black. The back, just matte black, some warnings, some logos, a UPC. On the other side, Ooh, so luxurious. Mmm. The top is gold, same thing for the bottom, but the front is a magnetic clasp, and you get your first look at Doc Nocturnal. The Tommy Gun brick wall target, and this is an overlay, and then, like I said, this is the first time I've done this. Let's see what's under here. Ooh, that's nifty. Pull this out. Oh, underneath. Even more accessories, some effects, the stand way down there. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this much stuff. It's kind of awesome. I'm going to get this open and start going through all this stuff. First up to get it out of the way, because I always forget about this after looking at the figure and the accessories, but there is the stand. It has that same logo on the bottom or graphic of Doc Nocturnal. Out of the package, there is a foot peg for the figure right there, but you can take that, pop it out from the back, or well, bottom, I guess, and then you can plug the heavy duty stand in. And like I always say, the Mezco stands are some of my favorite. They're big, they're tall. When you want a flying character, it gets them up in the air and they're sturdy enough to hold quite a bit of weight. And then I know it's a simple little thing, but I appreciate the baggie where you can put all the extra stuff in. It's easy enough just to write the name of the character on it, fill it up, put it wherever you store your accessories, the bin, the file cabinet, wherever. Oh, and getting it in hand and playing around with it and <laughs> figuring out what all the little things do, it's a very interesting set. The figure, the accessories, everything together. I think I mentioned in the intro that the couple of pages they sent as samples for the 48 page comic book, it felt very pulpy and looking at the figure itself, I have to say it again, it feels pulpy. And with Spirit Halloween popping up all over the place, October's on the way. This feels like a kind of a scrawny dude who just piecemealed his costume all together and then he goes out monster hunting at night. And you know what? There ain't nothing wrong with that. And I say scrawny guy because the limbs are a bit skinny, bit thin, but when you get up to the head, it actually feels like a skull mask, like there's a head under it, and then, you know, it's just something picked off the shelf. It is a full skull under this hood, and I'm not sure if this skull is reuse. I think it is, but it's a nice skull sculpt. That's hard to say really fast. And on top of that, the bone wash to it, it makes it feel realistic. But looking into the eyes, the nose, it seems like there's something under there covering a real face or something. Or, I don't know, maybe the comic book shows that his head is actually a skull. I'm just making this stuff up as I go. Another more stylized skull here on the chest, and with the cloth going over, there's a spider web pattern to this tunic that he wears over the torso. And I'm not sure if it's coming across in the camera. There you go. You can see just a faint design. Spider web on the front, kind of emanating from that skull. So it's a nice, <laughs> it's a very pleasing symmetrical design. The arms are covered in a, well, skin tight, <laughs> action figure tight kind of stretchy material that allows for all the articulation. Not a problem there. But you get down to the gloves and it's a sculpted solid detail. Love the sculpted stitch work here. And that's actually on both sides, inside and out. So it feels more like a leather cuff of some kind. The hand is a good sculpt and I like the wash on top of the red to kind of dirty it up a bit. But the size of it adds to the awkwardness of the overall figure, which is not a bad thing. I feel like this character, and again, we'll find out more later, but to me, 
it's supposed to feel a little bit awkward, a little off-putting. The legs, again, covered in that stretchy material. There are two red straps running down the side. And then at the boots, we see matching details that we saw at the gloves up here. Stitch work running down the outside, also on the inside. Again, a slight leather look to it and just enough shading to bring out the details. The belt is fantastic with the big buckle. Again, throwing back to that Halloween feel of it and then pouches running all the way around. We have a couple of loops on the back. A little loop to hang his keys off of and then a holster to hold the gun we'll talk about here in a minute. But I love that they threw the painted details in here too. The blacks, the leather look to it, the kind of metal to the buckle, and especially the little buttons on the pouches. That is one of my pet peeves when those aren't painted. But they just stick out very nice against the red and the black and the white of the rest of the body. On the left wrist, we get the night watch is what they're calling it. And they just describe it as his wrist mounted apparatus. I feel like this is his logo and it goes around the wrist, a leather band. Awesomely enough, this does flip up to show you some kind of readout. Very science fiction-y with the waves and the blue button and the silver. I haven't had a problem with it, and you know me, I get kind of gorilla handed, but it does feel a bit delicate. So I'd watch out for that when you're posing or especially swapping out the hands. The tunic does have a hood. When it's off the skull, you can kind of shove the back up under or something just to get it out of the way, but it doesn't look right in the down position, which is okay because I actually like it up and over. When it comes to hoods, I usually don't care for the point sticking up here at the end of this seam, and I like some hang down or something, but at the same time, for what my brain is coming up with this character and the whole thrown together look, I, I like this. It kind of adds to that overall head size. It's a bit jarring, I guess. Again, awkward a bit, but I don't mind it here because I feel like it's part of the personality. For articulation, there is a hinge at the jaw so you can open and close the mouth. <laughs> there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck, but the skull is pretty sunk on there. There's not a lot of up. There's a little down. There's some okay tilt. Swivel. The shoulder hinges up, rotates around. It gets caught up about right there, but that's more movement than I ever use in a shoulder. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow under there. Gonna come all the way up. Swivel hinge, swivel at the wrist so you can go one direction or swivel it around, rotate, and get it going up and down. Feels like a ball joint at the waist or mid torso somewhere in there, but get some hula hoop action. The hip comes all the way up and that is some fluid motion right there. That was easy to do. Back, out, oh, pfft. better than a certain wall crawler, right? There is rotation at the hip. Double knee, there is a bit of push at the end, but you can, bing, kick his own scully ass. You get down to the ankle and this is where I usually run into trouble with Mezco. There's some forward, there's some back, there's some rocker, but it's not a super amount of movement. I understand wanting to keep the aesthetic of the boot maintained, but at the same time, that kind of gets in the way of full range of movement. For accessories, Doc Nocturnal comes with several sets of hands. There are two fists. There's two splayed out hands. There's two tight grip hands. There's a right trigger finger and a left weapon weight holding hand that's made for smaller weapons. And then there's a left and right made for bigger weapons where the grips are a little bit wider. And then he comes with a single left two finger pointing hand. As I always say, Mezco is a dream to pop on and off, but the peg here seems a little bit tougher than usual. It's a good nice pop but it is a smaller pin so it's a bit more of a push than usual to get the hands that weren't on it in the package on the arm but that just means they're going to stay on there's also a cape that has two button clasps up here at the top and then wires running down the edge that's easy enough to put around the neck snap the two snaps and it's made of the same material as the hood and the tunic so it blends right in the wires in the cape aren't too stiff nice posability to them but it will hold its own weight if you want it flared out it is shorter than what you think of as a cape this is more of a cloak i think of this as him hiding a weapon back behind it oh i'm not doing anything kablooey but i'll say it again it just adds to the overall awkwardness that is making me like this figure more and more just because of that it comes with a very steampunkish type gas mask that i I'm loving more and more. I dig how the colors work off each other here. The golds, the blacks, the grays, the silvers, the browns. There's a lot of paint apps for an accessory here. And the lenses are even see-through. They are a blue color, which does not work with this, but you can see it's tinted a bit. The wires hanging down are a bit poseable, so you can get that up and around or twisted and then it comes down to this clasp that holds them together and at first i thought oh that plugs into something but i can't seem to find anything on the body and i also figured there would be a tab to open this up but this is one solid cast piece it is rubbery though so it it's not as troublesome as you expect you're not going to be able to just push it straight down though you want to take the back of the skull press it in and then rotate it down 
Oh, well, you can take the head off too. <laughs> that works. And then rotate the skull up into it. Pop that on and you have a completely different look for your Doc Nocturnal. The hood is already a bit tight on the skull itself, so it may take some stretching and some pulling to get it up over the mask. But you can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Actually, getting it back out of the gas mask is harder than getting it in. Push right here until it just wants to pop out. And while we have the head off, there is an alternate head that has more of a silly skeleton look to it. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely a skull, but it's not as angry looking as the regular head. A do 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 The greenish yellowish part here is glow in the dark, and then the back is just painted black. I guess that's to go under the hood. And to top it off, that also has a moving jaw. Comes with a pair of goggles. We see that same gold patina to it, those same bluish greenish lenses in it. And then it has an elastic strap, so it's gonna stretch over that big noggin of his. I'm not sure if this is reused from something else because it doesn't, oops, I went too far. The goggles don't conform to the skull head, so I have a feeling that this came with something else and was made for a human face, but that's not bad. Comes with one iron talon grapple claw and then another iron talon grapple claw with posing wire. This is a neat little thing that fits into the aesthetic of the rest of the figure. It opens just slightly, about that far. And I'm guessing that's to clamp ar well around things. I guess you can stretch it out a bit, but whew, don't go too far. And then the one with the posing wire, it also opens and shuts. And then this is just a like a separate piece of wire you can stretch out put wherever you want to i am never going to get that slinky back down to position if i want to keep it in the box but it's cool wire that holds up the weight of the clamp itself so yeah can't complain about that comes with hades inferno grenades it has that same logo we saw on the wrist apparatus the handles are a bit rubbery and stretchy and i think that's what these loops on the back here are for even though they seem large actually with a clamp fit down in there Ooh, no, that seems awful tight. So for now, zoop, that'll work right there. I think this is the supersonic disruptor device. There was an empty space below the grenades in the packaging that I thought, oops, I may have lost something. And then I found this under the gas mask in the first tray. Again, that gold copperish color to the whole thing, a little something and then some something and then a little bit of something. He can hold this in his hand, but what was throwing me is that there is a peg on the back of it. And I couldn't find a peg hole on the figure anywhere until after I messed around a bit and realized this pouch right here was rotating. And you know me, I see something rotating, I'm gonna pull, and there's your peg hole. So you can plug that onto the belt. It throws a little bit more color into the overall scheme here. He can hold his accessories. I love that. Dog Nocturnal comes with a death ray, which apparently needs a lot of components to work. There's your backpack with your tanks, and then your big gun. This may or may not be a flamethrower from another certain skull-headed character, but I love how much it's changed here with the logos on the side, this X-13, and then even on the inside, it's branded Doc Nocturnal. The straps and everything are miniaturized working backpack straps that even have a clasp on the front here. You can even adjust how long this is by, you know, going through it. It takes some patience and maybe some needle nose pliers, but it eventually opened up for me. And then the death ray emitter has slight wash to it. Bring out that detail. I like it. And it's easy enough to put on them. Just crank the arms back, put his arms through and then come up and around. And if you have a problem with the big chunky belt getting in the way, that does pop open here on the back and you can just take that completely off. Not a deal. Pull it down into a natural position and then put the belt back on. Like I said, you just find that hole, you push it back on and you're in business. And then there's also a glow in the dark effect for the death ray that, uh, yeah, you can tell that's reused too. But hey, that is not a problem. It just goes straight onto there and it looks good. You match that up with the glow-in-the-dark head, you have a nice little display for when you turn off the lights. Comes with the ferryman handgun, which is very clever. You want to send a monster to hell? <laughs> this is how you do it. Again, it has that kind of skull logo look on the side. Futuristic, but pulpish, but steampunkish. Yeah, it just takes all those elements, shoves them into a spirit Halloween body, and you're off to the races. Fits into the hand beautifully, but this holster flap on the side also opens. It's a stiff plastic, stiffer than I care for, but you get the gun down in there, you bring it down, and the stiffness does help you close that clasp easily, but it does tend to stick out when you have the belt down a bit. And then finally, if death rays and ferryman pistols aren't working, you just go for good old fashioned bullets. I'm not sure if this is reuse, I think it is, 
but I dig it. It's okay. I like the silvers, the blacks, the browns used here. I don't like the thin parts here and here though. There's no give to the gun and I'm afraid if I get too crazy with it, I'm going to snap something off. But it does come with two drums. I'm not sure which way these go. I think it goes this way because you can't put it this way. That sculpted piece gets in the way. But if you go this way and use these little sculpted parts right there, it has a snap to it. I'm okay with that. There's also a couple of bullet effects that we've seen several times over the course of the 112th Collective line, and that just slips into the barrel of the gun. So if you're coming across the... or if you just want a single bullet, there you go. Doc Nocturnal stands at pretty much exactly six inches tall to the top of the skull, which is a smaller body for this line because putting them up against Baron Benz, yeah, there's a definite size difference here. And then also small next to the Mezco 112th Collective Punisher and Batman. So at the end of the day, just a weird, wacky design that I liked more and more as the review went on. After I got past the frustrating initial getting it out of the package stuff, like adjusting straps and figuring out how buttons go and oops, the belt popped. Ooh, is it supposed to be on purpose? Yes, it is. Okay. Where the hell does this Sonic Disruptor thing go? Once I got past that and well, started coming up with a backstory in my brain until the comic book comes out, after I got into the groove of it, it was fun. Again, like Gomez and the rest of the Rumble Society, this is Mesco's own brainchild, so they can do whatever they want here. They can reuse parts and pieces from other licensed product. They can come up with just a character that has a skull that hunts monsters. Baron Benz can come in and help out with the crime fighting. Well, he does it at night. He does it in the water. They need a daytime land guy to fill out the team, I guess. Because even though Mesco's coming up with backstories and stuff, that's the fun thing about this. It's unique characters, unique action figures. You can do whatever you want. And you can put them wherever you want. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I can't decide if I like it with the cape or without the cape more. I, I'm okay with both, but there's just something to this. This is like stalking around in graveyards and, and old castles looking for monsters to do away with. I don't know. It's just a interesting design all the way around.